Welcome back to the next episode in the Pro-Q series. Today, we are going to be looking at the setup of coals and everything for certain cooks in the Pro-Q bullet smoker. Um, I'm gonna be using our XL demo unit, so you'll see it has some use. Um, yeah, we'll look through coals, setting up that sort of thing, wart pan, no wart pan, um, grills, hanging food, all that sort of stuff. So, follow along and see what happens. Right, first things first, Obviously this is the Pro-Q XL, and as we established on the first video, the charcoal basket sits in that bottom tier. You then got your water pan and your first grate and your second grate sat up there. So I'm gonna get the top off and let's have a look at the charcoal basket. Like I said, this is our demo unit and it's had well over a year's worth of use and sometimes quite a lot of abuse. So it's held up well, but that's irrelevant to this, this video. So, as I said, charcoal basket sits in here. Now, a lot of people use lump wood, a lot of people use briquettes. It's all down to personal preference. Um, I mean, the briquettes in a long cook in this unit work very well because of the consistent burn. Um, Pro-Q do their own range of coconut shell briquettes which are square and they stack perfectly in here so you can build up a real a real bank of coal um, one of the main methods that people use is the minion method which is what I'm going to set up now and show you how to use this so for this example we are using the Globaltic birch um, briquettes so you can see they're all uniform sized and this works really well for this minion method but it doesn't have to be you can do it messy I'll show you the same set up with lump wood and all that sort of stuff as well so what we'll do is we'll get this all laid out in here and i'll come back and show you what that's like in a sec now for the purpose of this video this is and depending on how your ocd is this is one way to set it up so you have all your coals banked around the edge um, and what you would do is you would light the charcoal in your chimney starter. I would use about eight briquettes and you dump that in the middle. And then as they burn out, all of these ones catch and you get that burn all the way out to the outer edge. And then basically the minimum method is the application of the, the dip in the middle or a, a gap in the middle and you dump the coals into the middle and then it expands out. Um, like I say, this is for the purpose of the video. It doesn't have to be this neat. I will also show you an easier way of doing it. You don't have to stack it all up, but it just looks a bit cooler. Um, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's gonna burn out and turn into ash anyway, so irrelevant. But yeah, so this is the menu method. Basically, coals bank around the edge and a gap in the middle. Some people put charcoal in the middle as well and then dump it in there. But yeah, that's menu method there. I'll also show you what the messy one looks like just now. If you're not worried about it being stacked up and all that sort of stuff, I haven't got time. It doesn't need to be like that. What we have to do, pull out with charcoal, make a gap in the middle. Done. Again, lit coals get poured into the middle. As it lights, it expands around to the outer edge. And then the amount of charcoal just depends on how big the cook's gonna be. Obviously, if it's only going to be a short cook or a short smoke, you don't need a lot of coals. If you're doing a big brisket, anything like that, then you could fill that up. Still light the middle, same amount of coals. And then just shut the fence down when you finish. And any coals that are left there, be reused in the next one. For those that don't know what I mean about a chimney starter, this is that. So basically you put your charcoal in there. Uh, about eight briquettes is what I normally use. You'd put your two fire lighters underneath. Don't do it on a shop painted floor. I'm not going to light it. Light those, put that on top, and then you'd wait for your briquettes to turn white and ashy. And that is when they're ready to go. And like I mentioned, pour that in the middle, and you are set to go. Put your lit coals in there. Obviously, you want to add some smoking wood, smoking chunks, that sort of thing. Um, Pro-Q do sell their own, and we've got them in store, but I've got to hand some of the smoky oak chunks. So what I tend to do is you have your lit coals 
in the middle here. So raging hot. I'd put one on top and I'd maybe pick two smaller chunks, put one to the side, either side of that. So as it spreads out, you get more smoke. You can use one, obviously it all depends how big the chunks are. These are quite big chunks. So I'd probably only use another one or break that in half, split that down. And that would be enough for a cook. Um, some things you only want to probably use one. So like chicken, that sort of thing. Cause you don't want to overpower the meat with the smoke, especially on something stronger like your oak or your hickory. So yeah, that is your mini method. That is ready to go. Obviously you'd have your raging coals in the middle and as it cooks, it would expand out. And obviously you can keep an eye on it through the bottom door. You can keep an eye on what's going on if you want to add another chunk of wood, that sort of thing. So that was obviously with the briquettes. Another option that people cook with is lump wood. So you need to get yourself a good quality lump wood. Um, and again, you set yourself out. So this is, again is the mini method. So you set it all out, you fill the charcoal basket with your lump wood. Obviously you can't stack these nicely because everything's different sizes. But what you do is fill your basket and then all you do is create a gap in the middle, just like that. And you would fill your charcoal starter, your chimney starter, with half to a full chimney of charcoal and get that raging hot and then dump that in the middle. So again, fire starts in the center and it spreads out. Again, with the smoking wood, drop one in the middle and then one to either side, depending on how big the chunks are and how long the cook is. Um, there are two other ways that you can light your lump wood as well. This work, these two options work better with lump wood just because briquettes, because of being compressed, they take slightly more energy to start, whereas lump wood doesn't. So this, these next two methods work better with lump wood, which I'll show you. One is have your charcoal laid out as it is, and then drop two, I tend to use two, two fire lighters in the middle and light those. Now this method will take slightly longer, purely because you're starting the fire in the center. There's no heat rising or anything like that, like it would in a chimney starter, but it still works very well. The second option, instead of using your fire lighters, is if you've got one, is to use one of these electric charcoal starters. So this is one that we sell, I've actually just sold out. But all this is, is a very intense, heat gun and again all you would do is start this up hold it in the middle until you've got glowing coal and away you go these take maybe 60 seconds to get the coals lit and then to get its temperature you're probably looking another 10 15 minutes but they all they all tend to be about the same sort of time to get them started Nice one with the charcoal starter is um, you can use that throughout a cook. So if you want to boost the temp up slightly or it's fluctuating too much, you want to, you just chuck to load new coals in, you can use that to boost it up quicker. But irrelevant to that, like I said, all three methods. So you either dump the charcoal in from the charcoal starter in the middle, drop two fire lighters in the middle, or use a chimney starter in the middle. And that is the menu method. And that works very well in these these setups. It's not the only way you can do it, but that's personal personally what I use um, and what I tell the customers to use. Next video, I will show you at what point I add the chunks um, and all that sort of stuff. So the next video will be it, our first cook on this for the series. But I will show you how much I let the cold spread, all that sort of stuff, because at the end of the day, if you're grilling on this and you're not doing low and slow, you can just get this as lit as much as you want, um, get it as hot as you want, that sort of stuff. But we'll cover that in another video, like I said. So you've got it all going and now it's time to build this up, ready for a low and slow cook. First step is to get that stack on. So you've got your first stack on. Now. This explanation is for low and slow. So I won't go into too much detail on the other stuff yet, but I will show you that on the other cooks like I keep saying. But 
if you wanted to have it like this, you could just put your first grate in, like so, and just grill at that height, direct above the charcoal. But for this, we are doing a low and slow. So first option is water pan. So your water pan sits inside there like that. Sits on these three tabs below the grate. So there's a lot of different methods people use. Um, these are designed to fill with water. So this is your water pan that acts as your heat sink. Um, some people struggle to build up temperatures. Um, it all depends on weather, all that sort of stuff. But what we tend to do is we would wrap this in tin foil and just use it as a heat deflector. Some people put sand in there as well. And again, it has the same effect, acts as a heat deflector. Keeps temperatures down for low and slow. You can also do low and slow without this in there at all, um, which I will show you in a sec. But for this, we're going on the basis that we're doing the low and slow and we're cooking on both grates on both levels. So you got your water pan in, covered in tin foil, and then you would get your first grate on. And that'd be your first layer to put your food on. Obviously this will be slightly hotter because um, it's close to the fire, all that sort of stuff. So maybe bigger cuts or things that might take slightly longer or higher fat content because it won't be as dried out and that sort of thing. We go on that level. And the next step, let's get the second level on, which I'll do now. Second level on. So this would be your top cooking grate. So again, you've got your first cooking grate down there and then your second cooking grate up the top. So these XLs have a lot of cook space. You know, plenty of food on there. I think in our classes at some points we have four racks of ribs and wings on these and still space for other bits and pieces. Um, so once that's all built up, you then get your lid on. And that is the barbecue built up, ready for low and slow. Obviously, you make sure it's all latched down and safe when you're cooking. But that is assembly ready for cook, or one assembly ready for cook. And then like I said earlier, once your fire is going in there, this is a perfect access point to chuck in more coal, lumps of wood, anything like that, that you may need throughout this cook. As for vents, it tends to depend on the weather, things like that. But I normally have one fully open at the front and another one fully open towards the back on startup at least. And you can have all three open if you want to, fully open. And this fully open as well. And as, as the temperature rises, I tend to start looking at the vents, knocking them back when it's about 15, 20 degrees off. And as you watch that gradually slow down, a lot of the temperature control will then be done from the top. But I'll go through those on all the, all the cook videos we do, I'll go through those because the ambient temperature outside might be different, the wind might be higher, all that sort of stuff. But for start up, all open. So it's building the temperature up. 15, 20 degrees off where you want it. Start to look at closing the blower vents down and then regulating the temperature through these. I also mentioned that you don't necessarily need the warp pan to do a low and slow cook. So do that. Take both grates out and remove the warp pan. That leaves you directly above the coals. You don't need the second grate or the first grate because that would be quite close to the fire. So you put the lid back on. And 
then you could do low and slow on the top grate with no heat deflector. Just keep the temp just keep an eye on the temperatures, keep an eye on the meats. That would work well with like your pork shoulders, that sort of thing. Pork butts that have got high fat content. Um, that you don't have to worry too much about drying out. But anything else you can spritz all that sort of stuff as well. So that's just another option for your low and slow. And then also you can remove that top grate and hang, which will be included in your box. But you could hang foods, hang meats, fish, that sort of stuff off of that, direct above the coals. That is just a quick look at setup of the ProQ XL, or any of the ProQ range, any of the ProQ bullet smokers. Um, for low and slow, detailing the minion method, um, and water pan in, water pan out, all that sort of stuff. Um, next video will be a cook. So I haven't decided fully what we're gonna cook yet, um, but we will go through that, and we'll go through using the minion method, and that sort of stuff. We'll also be doing some direct grilling in another video. So we'll go through setup of that, um, what coal's best to use, water pan, all that sort of stuff. Um, we will look at doing some hanging as the temperatures start to get colder in the UK after summer. We'll also look at doing cold smoking, all that sort of stuff. Um, rotisserie cooks, plancher cooks, um, how portable they are for traveling, camping, all that sort of stuff. So if there's something specific you want to see to the Pro-Q range on the bullet smoke or anything like that, drop us a comment below, send us a message on our social media and let us know what you want to see. And hopefully see you in the next one. If you like this video, press the little subscription bell, drop a comment, all that sort of stuff. Subscribe, you know the drill. So we can keep making these videos and hopefully helping you guys out. See you later.